हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू द लास्ट वीडियो ऑफ द सब्जेक्ट थियोटिकल कंप्यूटर साइंस द टॉपिक नेम ओवर हियर इज एम्बिगुअस वर्सेस अन एम्बिगुअस ग्रामर सो फ्रेंड्स बिफोर वी कंप्लीट द सब्जेक्ट लेट मी टेल यू दैट ऑनेस्टली स्पीकिंग देयर आर अ फ्यू मोर शॉर्ट नोट्स ओवर हियर मे बी लाइक द राइस थियोरम पोस्ट करस्पॉन्डेंस प्रॉब्लम एंड Uh, what is non-deterministic pushdown automata? What is multi-stack Turing machine? What is multi-stack pushdown automata? And they are more of theoretical answers which I am not going to discuss in the video as such. All of this would be given as a resource part to be appended as the part of this video. So you can always request for those short notes and you can study it from there. They are going to be quite simple short notes which you have to simply mug it up in the exam. So. Let's get started with the last video of this subject. So friends, coming on to ambiguous grammar. Now, how do you define an ambiguous grammar? We say a grammar is said to be ambiguous if it can derive at least one sentence so if it can derive at least one sentence using more than one lmd or more than one rmd so grammar is said to be ambiguous if it can derive one sentence using more than one lmd or more than one rmd let's go on to the definition of unambiguous grammar so as far as unambiguous grammar is concerned we say grammar is said to be unambiguous if it can derive all sentence if it can derive all the sentences using exactly one lmd and exactly one rmd Let's take an example and try to understand the difference in between the two. So friends, let me consider the first example where I am talking of ambiguous grammar. The question over here is, we are given the grammar of the form E gives E plus E or E star E or ID and it is asking us to derive id plus id star id using the above productions so now friends moving on to the solution let me write the lmd for this so if i say i want to derive the above string i can start with e gives me e plus e right Further, since I am doing LMD, I say let this E be replaced by ID plus E remains as it is. Further going ahead, I say ID will remain as it is, but instead of this E, I write E star E. Next time I say ID plus this E be replaced by ID star E. Next time I say id plus id and lastly this e will also be replaced by id and we see that the string is generated using lmd. But as I told you this is an example of ambiguous grammar. So ambiguous grammar means the same string could be generated using more than one lmd. So let's see are we able to do it. So let me write one more lmd and this time I am thinking of starting with e star e okay now friends 
with this initially i say my first e will be replaced by e plus e and star e remains as it is now next time i replace the leftmost e by id plus e star e next time i replace the second e by id star e next time i replace the final e by id and i get id plus id star id and the same string is now generated using more than one lmd and such a type of grammar is said to be ambiguous in nature so the grammars which we did till now the context free grammars which we discussed in the entire grammar chapter were unambiguous in nature this is for the first time we are discussing ambiguous grammar now how to deal with ambiguous grammar will be actually taught in the next subject which will be coming in the next semester called as system programming and compiler construction as of now we can conclude over here that there are two types of grammar one will be ambiguous in nature and next will be unambiguous in nature and what we have in the syllabus is unambiguous grammar and not the ambiguous one but yes short note does come on types of grammar short note does come on what is the difference between ambiguous and unambiguous grammar so without getting confused you should be able to write and tell the difference between ambiguous and unambiguous grammar now friends apart from these two strings if you try using to derive this string using rmd also you will realize that you are able to have more than one rmds and that is the reason we say that the grammar is ambiguous in nature so having completed till here now i feel satisfied to conclude my course and i am very sure that every one of you might have understood the entire gist of the subject entire detailed each and minute things of the subject of theoretical computer science starting from finite state machine moving on to finite automata dfa nfa moore machine milli machine followed by the grammars then chomsky normal form the griback normal form going on to push down automata its problems and finally coming on to turing machine and arden's theorem so with this friends i take your leave thank you very much for having the patience to listen to the videos bye bye